This is a summary on a trip light PR40 I bought broken at Amateur Radio Swap Meet a few years ago. And this is a summary, and then after this I go into the details of your uh, so you don't get too bored. Anyways, out big output transformer on here. It's got 18 volts, 18 volts, 36 center tap. That's here. The little guy that powers the regulator board has got a five. On mine, this was a 1.8. This is screwed up. And the input is 120 volts AC here on the winding. This particular one, when I hooked it up, had 5 amps. It only 112 volts input, and that's why it was goofed up. 0 to 40 amps. Got the Variac directly driving the transformer. Here I'm up to about 12 volts. There it is at 5 amps. You can actually hear the transformer. So that's totally goofed up. Now as a sanity check, what I'm going to do is on here, I don't think there's very much current. Could be that the output on this is shorted. So what I may do is try to undo one of these or clip the wires here just to see if it's not shorting through here. Or what I can do is put the current clamp on here and see if I've actually got something flowing through here. Okay, I've got the current probe on the center tap here to the bridge, one of them. And I'm going to go through here and fire this up. And lo and behold, we've got about 8 amps here. So, it can also be right now that it's just shorted out on the output. Transistors are shorted out. Because i got 7 amps, at least AC flowing on this center tap. In fact, I can feel this, it's vibrating. Okay, I've got it on the other output wire of the center tap. Kick it on. It's got about 6 amps flowing to it too. Each one of those, one, one side goes to this side set of transistors, one goes to this one. On the back there's, uh, you can't see, but there's two output transistors here and two another pair over here. So I've got a lot of current flowing. These are 2N3771s. Seven, seven you got one, two, and that bank, and there's another set in there. These boards look similar. And then the output here in the center tap, one goes to this board, and one goes to the one over here. Run through and clip the center tap to the board over on this side. I'm going to turn this on. Bring up about 12 volts. That's 12 volts input to this transformer. And there it is, about 8 amps still flowing on this other side. Of course, there's none flowing over here. I can put my hand on this, I can actually feel the vibration. Okay, I've now got the clamp on the input here, just for kicks. Turn this up to about 12 amps, 12 volts. There it is, only about 4 amps. I've cut both sides of the center tap here. Cut it here because I can go ahead and put some wire nuts here if I ever want to resurrect this instead of throwing this away. I'm going to measure the input current here. There it is, 4 amps again. Through an undead the one side of the transformer here to the bridge. So I've got this undone, both center taps. Kick it on. Bring up the voltage. Ooh, look, we're not drawing any current. Interesting. Let's bring it up higher. We actually, uh,
half amp at 120 volts. So we got there's a half amp, say 118, 120, you got about 50, 60 volt amperes. Let's see if I can hear the that's where you can hear it saturate there. About 132, say, you got 0.96. So transformer there is uh, maybe okay. So the something after that bridge is off. Now what I probably should do is plug that back in and then undo the other set of other bridge on there. But right now it seems like that's okay. Well, we're not going to get any current flowing with <coughs> nothing connected up. Okay, we've got a voltmeter connected up from one edge of the transformer to the center tap, which is in black. This is the full voltage, blue to blue. Blue to one side here. We'll call this blue left, blue right. That's half the uh, voltage of the output of the transformer. Bring this up, say, at 120 volts. There we draw in about a half amp. So that's roughly say 60, say 70 volt amperes. That's not the that's the apparent power. Not real power. There it is 18 volts. So if you multiply by 2, you'd have 36 volts uh, RMS coming out of this transformer. Uh, now we're not drawing the 3 amps, so at least the main part of this transformer is working. Now what I should do is go through here and check uh, put some click leads and check what the output is on this side. Now we're going to look at the smaller winding here that is generally adds to the DC voltage when it's rectified to run the control board. Uh, I'm going to check this. Of course this puts out AC. I'm going to put this across the two blues which are across both windings on not look at the center tap. I've got this unplugged by the board, the regulator board, just to make sure there's no weirdness in loading. We kick this on. Normally you don't kick it on real quick, you bring it up slowly if there's a short, otherwise you have some exciting things, wires pop. There's the roughly 0 0.59, 0 0.55 amps. And Look, this over here is pretty strange, the readings. 1.7 volts, it doesn't make any sense. If I go here to the center tap of black, to one of them, that's about 4.5, say 5 volts for talking here. 5 volts on here, I'm going to leave this on black, I'm going to go ahead and put this on this tap. Now if I short this out, it could be exciting. 3.1 there's only 1.8 so what happens the outer winding on here that's what this is it's screwed up so to fix this what I can do is put another little transformer in here powered off the 110 and power this to drive the circuit if I figure out what it is and just guessing about this if I put this on here I got 5 volts center tap to ground. It's probably 10 volts uh, across both windings in the correct transformer for this little uh, little itty bitty winding. Of course this other one here as we measured is 36 volts RMS across both of them on the bigger windings. This is the black. These go to the power section that creates the power regulated power. This is section here is actually the regulator itself and like they do on the power pyramid design they take the DC rail of this and add a little bit of voltage DC probably five six eight volts to give some headroom for the regulator and this is the drive transistor that goes through and powers the two boards and so 
it looks like there's several issues. This little guy here is screwed up, that one winding. And then even without that, me plugging this in and running five, uh, when you get about 12 volts on this, when it was connected up to the bridge, we have just about full saturation, like this has got five or six amps and 120 volts. Uh, you hear a lot of humming going on, which means I need to go buzz out these. Turn this off. I need to go ahead and buzz out to see if the bridges are shorted out. There's a full way of bridges on there. You can buzz that out with a diode checker. I don't know if it's got one on here. Go through each section. Or it might be there's a blown transistor on here. And that's it. So this is the 40 bucks broken, but I think I paid around 20. It was at the end of the swap meets. It was a heavy item. Guy didn't want to carry it home. Screwed up. Got this at the Jackson Amateur Radio swap meet, I think, two years ago. Um, it's heavy as hell. So right now, I don't have a schematic. If anybody's got a schematic, you can post one on, help. But I just wanted to put this on the Internet just to show uh, there's not that much information on these trip lights. It's like they keep it. Somebody said another full arm. It's the Holy Grail. Again, this is the high output section. So the high current section would be a better thing. Goes through the bridges, rectified. These are the regulator, linear uh, control, you got four transistors, some filter caps, and then of course this is the regulator board. Because you got to have some headroom to drive the bases of the transistors. And of course, that is the transistor that drives it through here, and I guess that's the regulator on there. LM614CM. I can't see what the other one is on there. My other one's got a 723.